Welcome to Bo's Workshop. Today we're going to test how strong wood and fiberglass combined are. I've been building a few boats and I'm trying to choose materials and the question is well how strong is fiberglass combined with plywood? What kind of abuse can it take? So I have some quarter inch material which is really 3 16 so I have an 11 30 seconds piece of plywood where we put a couple layers of fiberglass on it and we're going to test it uh, with an impact, I created a device to deliver hammer blows. The, the whole device weighs about 18 pounds, and we dropped that hammer from different heights to test the, the impact resistance the fiberglass adds to the plywood, and the results were predictable, but at least this gives you a real, real world sense of how much strength you gain by doing this and how the different layers of fiberglass add that strength. So for the tangible types that need to touch it and feel it, this will give you a real world example of how much strength that you get. And then I also tested the tensile strength of the plywood. The last boat that I built I had a quarter inch floor. It was had two layers of fiberglass on it. I thought that I might need to put a deck in it because I weigh 250 pounds and I was worried that stepping on the deck would fatigue the wood and the fiberglass and maybe that would fail. And uh, so we're going to put this material to the test and see uh, the realistic expectation of what you can, you can get out of the strength of the material. And, uh, and I have a tendency to build heavy so I would guess that my natural assumptions are wrong and, and maybe the last build I wouldn't have needed to put the wood deck in it. but. Today we're going to test because I'm going to build a second rail bird and I might make different decisions based on this test. All right, so we are set up for the strength test. We have different materials. We have two different types of quarter inch plywood and by quarter inch, we really mean three sixteenths. They skip me out of a sixteenth. And then we have a piece of sandy ply that has uh, no fiberglass. We have a piece of sandy ply with one layer of fiberglass and one with two layers and that's the quarter inch sandy ply then we have an 11 30 seconds plywood we have one with two layers and there's some seams in there kind of test that strength as well and then we have a piece with no fiberglass and we have our our hammer we're going to do a pseudo scientific experiment where we can try, try to control some of these forces to get an apples to apples comparison so let's see how this goes so for the first strike, we're going to use this hammer set up. It's a Schedule 42 inch pipe with a three pound ball peen hammer. We have the quarter inch sandy ply. I use some two by two pine as a frame uh, to give it something to, to break across. And we'll start with the 12 inch hit. This is the first go at it. Uh, hopefully it survives that. And we'll keep raising the hammer uh, higher until there's enough force to break the board. There's about 12 inches. So a 12 inch strike on this sandy ply created a hole. Now we have the quarter inch sandy ply with one layer of fiberglass cloth and with epoxy resin we're going to get an approximate 12 inch drop. So the 12 inch did not penetrate, it bounced. It cracked the back of the plywood slightly, but it withstood the hit. Let's ramp it up a little bit higher. We'll strike a different section of the plywood. Raise it up to about 16 inches here. It's a little closer to the wood. It withstood that. Visual damage to the back, this would be like close to the frame rail. Raise this up to about 20 inches. And at 20 inches we have a material failure where it broke through the fiberglass, penetrated the plywood. This is two layers of fiberglass on sandy ply. So approximately the, the 12 inch strike. A 
Well, it doesn't appear there's a lot of difference between the impact of the the two layers versus the one layer. There's some cracking on the back side of the, the plywood here. I'll do a strike closer to the frame. This strike will be at 16 inches, approximately. This took a little less damage close to the frame. It did crack the back side of the plywood. No penetration in the middle of the fireplace. At 20 inches of strike, the fiberglass didn't break. There is damage to the back of the plywood. Overall, the two layers have withstood a, a harder strike. This did not fail. I would assume that this would not leak water in a small boat if you had an impact of that strength. We'll do a strike at 26 inches. Still didn't fail. Strike at 30 inches. Still didn't fail. Strike at three feet. Now, although we're getting some heavy damage on the back side of the plywood, we haven't penetrated the fiberglass cloth at this point. Let's go for another hit. Now, these are repeated strikes. So, you know, not only can it take one hit, it can take multiple hits and I would assume it would take a lot to make it fail on a first strike based on what we're finding here. So we'll go four feet. So at four feet with multiple strikes, we achieved failure of the material, failure of the fiberglass, and failure of the plywood. So the two layers of fiberglass represent a significant increase in strength. Without fiberglass, it, it didn't even withstand a 12 inch drop. So it took over three feet of drop to produce this damage to, to the point of failure. This is the 11 seconds plywood. This is more of a structural plywood versus a, a veneer nice finish. Uh, the surface isn't as perfect. You'd have to sand more. And it's, uh, although I like the look of it, it's not quite as beautiful as the sandy ply or some of these other veneered plywoods. Let's see how it holds up the strength. We'll start out at 12 inches. That was our baseline with the sandy ply. Bounced right off. I expected that. This material is a lot stronger than the sandy ply. Let's go up to 20 inches. At 20 inches, it put a quite, quite a decent divot in it. So there, there's a divot. There's some cracking at the back. It didn't make a full hole. We'll strike a different spot and we'll raise it up a little bit higher. And we'll go 26 inches. It didn't fail. It took damage. 30 inches. So at 30 inches we have a hole. At 26 inches we had a bigger divot on the back side. Um, so over twice as strong as the quarter inch sandy ply and considering that there was multiple strikes the first strike would have weakened the plywood but at 30 inches that was all that this material was going to handle well this test piece is the 11 30 seconds it represents a larger build there's actually a seam right in the middle of this piece so this is Testing the strength of two layers of fiberglass on 11 30 seconds, and it is testing the seams. Uh, I use scrap material to do this, and this is just kind of how it came out. It's a little, uh, it messes the control up a little bit as far as this isn't one continuous piece, but we'll see how it goes. We'll start at the 26 inches, that's when the 11 30 seconds started taking some real damage. Slight indentation. It didn't pierce the wood. It didn't break the 
fiberglass cloth. We'll go up to 30 inches. No damage on the plywood with that one that hit off of a seam. The first strike was on a seam. Up to 40 inches. Slight cracking of the plywood. Didn't penetrate the fiberglass. 42, 45 inches. Was struck the strike. Some breakage of the uh, plywood. No breakage of fiberglass cloth. Get a little different surface of this area. So we're coming up maybe four and a half feet. Slight package of the plywood, didn't penetrate. About a six foot drop of a strike. After several strikes and six feet of uh, gravity accelerating that mass, that's what it took to break the fiberglass and to make the plywood fail. So two, two layers of fiberglass on 11 30 seconds plywood is far stronger than the, the two layers of fiberglass on eighth inch. So depending on the application of the vessel with the boat that you're making, these are uh, kind of an experiential demonstration on how strong the material is so that you can build appropriately. All right, in this test, we're testing a three inch by 16 inch long strip of quarter inch plywood. We're gonna go through all the, the different types of plywood and the fiberglass layers. I started out trying to do the test, putting different weight on to the plank and it turns out, well, it's a lot stronger than I thought and I'm not gonna have enough weight. So I am going to just physically put pressure into the top through a, a hammer. I'm gonna use the, the wood part of the hammer to push down and we'll measure how much deflection that the material, material can tolerate and we'll judge the strength on that deflection level. All right, here's the first piece with the quarter inch sandy ply. Now there's a difference in strength between this plywood, which is the same thickness as the sandy wood plywood. So we're just gonna see what it takes to break this one. When the sandy ply broke, it, it broke clean off. It's pretty energetic. It got to a certain point and it just snapped. This plywood, when it got to a point where it broke, it broke, but there was enough layers in there to, to keep the board from coming into two separate pieces. And if you look at the differences as the grain, the sandy ply is a darker, uh, the other type of plywood has three pretty even layers. The sandy ply has kind of a dark center with uh, some veneer on either side. So I would say that uh, the top plywood is much stronger. And if I were to build a complete boat, I would choose that material over the sandy ply. Not to mention, oh, I really like the grain pattern in this. It has these stripes. There's a darker side, there's a lighter side. You finish that out, kind of looks like that. This is a wood cooler that I have veneered using an old uh, star from cooler. So this boat building is creating other projects and using that technology. This is quarter inch sandy ply with one layer of fiberglass cloth. The wood bent and it ended up not breaking. It slipped off the sawhorses. So I'll run a couple screws in it and we'll try it again. All right, this is the second attempt at breaking the quarter inch plywood with the one layer of fiberglass cloth. This time the board is screwed into the sawhorses. The screws ripped out of the wood the wood didn't fail. I was putting a fair amount of weight into it. So this uh, one layer of fiberglass cloth 
where the fiberglass is acting like a hammock and this force is actually quite good much much stronger than it would otherwise be well I'm curious if the fiberglass is stronger on one side versus the other side in this first test piece uh, the screws end up ripping out it broke my saw horse so I added a little piece of 2x2 two two to give a little more ledge to screw into but quite an impressive difference with one layer of fiberglass so let's see if that same piece of wood can bend uh, away from the fiberglass and see if it's still as strong the answer is no the fiberglass is much stronger pushing up so the bottom side of the boat uh, getting pushed up can break the fiberglass but stepping in the boat and putting the load down into the fiberglass it'll be able to cradle that weight quite well now the fiberglass itself it's stronger than my saw horses so i'm going to have to redesign this test to, to carry on but in tension this fiberglass is super strong it's, all right, so I've put, set up my hydraulic pipe bender with a die on it, and I brought the wood between the rollers just to where there's some tension. I found when I'm bending pipe, if I count full stroke pumps, I can get pretty consistent bends. So we're gonna test the strength of this board by how many pumps it takes to cause a failure. So one, two, three, 38. 39 40 the wood is cracking and we are at failure and that is without fiberglass this is plywood with one layer of fiberglass make sure this is centered up one two three 56 57 cracking sounds 58 59 60 61 62 63 64 65, 66, maybe 64, 65, we really started getting major structural failure of the wood. The fiberglass is holding up, it's just bending. No damage to the fiberglass, starting to get deflection and, and cracking of the wood material. Alright, this is the stress test with two layers of fiberglass, counting the pumps. One, two, six. Cracking sounds, 57, 58, 59, 60, 61, 62, 63, 64, 65, 66, 67, 68, 69, 70, 71, 72. The hydraulic press is able to pretty much push it through. Uh, the wood will bend. It has to bend very significantly before it will break. This is essentially testing the, the tensile properties of fiberglass and it's as strong as steel maybe stronger than steel of the same uh, thickness so pushing into the fiberglass is strong pushing away from the fiberglass will break the wood but it will still maintain the tensile integrity of the fiberglass itself well, to sum up the test, and I think it really went great. I have a much better understanding of what this material will do now, and uh, not just in boat building, but there's a few projects I wanted to build, like a like a kayak fishing crate. And people make them out of the milk cartons. Well, I thought, well, if you did that with wood and use some fiberglass, you could make something very strong and very beautiful, very very functional. So maybe I'd like to do a higher end version of that. I'm making a couple coolers that are wood veneered and styrofoam with fiberglass. And I think there's a lot of ways that you can use this technology to make fine craft projects, not just boats. So I'm really excited to be able to build something with the beauty of wood and the strength of fiberglass.